just got off work. We want to go fly. How are we going to know if it's flyable? Yeah, you checked your weather apps, but is that really the end all be all? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to spot environmental factors on your ride home from work to see if it's actually flyable. So let's go spot some telltales. So we're gonna go look for some telltale signs. And right away, I found our first one. So I'm gonna pull over here and get a shot of the flag. Now flags are great for a number of reasons. They act very similarly to a windsock. If you see a flag that is basically bed sheeted out, you know that the winds are pretty strong and it might be a while before you call it safe to fly. Additionally, flags can be really useful because they are literally everywhere. I'm sure, I promise you that wherever you're commuting from or to, you're guaranteed to find a flag of some sort. There's another one. One, two, three, just in a single block. With flags, however, it is kind of important to note that they're not always gonna give you the most accurate reading depending on the altitude they reach. I would say the more exposed and open your flagpole is that you're reading, the more accurate it's gonna be to your open field that you fly from. Another benefit to a flag is if you have any orienteering skills, you'll be able to decide whether or not the wind direction is appropriate for your specific flying field. Maybe you have a certain direction that you are limited to and you'll be able to read the flag and say, okay, the wind's coming out of the east. That's not ideal for my location. I'll probably wait for a different day or something along those lines. Let's look for another environmental factor that we could use. Moving on to our second roadside environmental factor that we can reference. These are gonna be trees. So assuming you aren't commuting through a tundra, trees are gonna be a fantastic, again, plentiful resource for you to reference. And the rule of thumb with the trees is if you see them moving and what pieces and parts of them are moving. On a nice, smooth, calm day is that the leaves are just sort of glittering in the wind, which is what we like as paramotor pilots. Now another convenient reading that trees provide us is uniformity across an area. This is going to tell you how consistent the conditions are on a micro environmental level. So in a given area, you could reference trees on one side of the block and then look on the other side of the block to measure consistency. Are the trees moving the same amount? Do we see, basically, are the trees doing the exact same thing? And if they are, that's gonna be a green light for you. If you start to see the bigger branches starting to move, you've got a little bit more wind influence on that tree, and it's going to get stiffer at that point, right? You're gonna get up to 20 miles an hour or so when you see the bigger limbs starting to sway and move. And then of course, if you see the whole tree shaking, it's probably pretty obvious to you at that point that it's not gonna be flyable. That's gonna cover it for trees. Moving on to our third wind indicator, it's gonna be water. Now, not everybody has water to reference on their ride home, but if you do, it can be very useful. So let's pull over here and take a look at the water. With the water, again, you've got the ability to check out environmental uniformity. Now with a larger body of water, like I've got over my shoulder here, Lake Wales presents a really large picture into what my atmosphere is doing. I've got about three and a half square miles of water to assess what that wind conditions are doing. Again, like with the trees, I can assess condition uniformity. Do I see even striations across my lake? Are there any really glassy flat spots that you see? Are there white caps in one section? Another way to put this would be, is the texture of the lake consistent throughout? If I've got white caps in one section of the lake with patchy, glassy flat spots, you know that these conditions are gonna be a little wild, still probably a little bit thermic, and we know it's gonna be at least a little while before conditions calm down enough to be able to safely fly. 
Now the caveat to this is generally speaking, if you have wind speed, you're always going to have a glassy section. And that glassy section is going to abide on the upwind side of the lake. So if winds are coming out of the east, that glassy flat spot's gonna be on the east side of the lake where that wind hasn't where the wind hasn't dipped down enough to actually affect that water. So let's make a few observations of our lake today. We've got even striations throughout our water surface. I don't see a bunch of random glassy spots or anything like that. So the wind is fairly consistent across our lake's surface. We do not see any white capping going on, which indicates that our wind speed is less than 15 miles an hour. Once you start getting above 15, you'll start to see the water surface becoming more and more aggravated from that point. Now, if we go ahead and pause the video here for a moment, we can zoom in and see these differences in textures. And these textures indicate the gusts, right? Whenever you have darker patches of water, indicate stronger airflow. It's creating darker water. Anybody versed in sailing can tell you that this is an approaching gust. Again, we are still very early on in our flying window, but these are the types of things you're looking for to determine how soon it's going to be flyable. Do we see gusts that are producing white caps? Okay, may not calm down enough for our flying window to actually justify getting all of our equipment out to the field. So that's going to cover it for lakes. Now let's move on to environmental factor number four, birds. So birds can be a fantastic resource to reference, depending on the type of bird. So really what you're looking for with this indicator are turkey vultures. They are truly everywhere, which is why I'm bringing up that specific species. So with birds, here are the specifics of what you're looking for. Are they moving at a rate that is sensible? Do they look like they are traveling at light speed, which would indicate strong wind conditions moving downwind? Are they fighting the winds going upwind? Are they moving really slowly? How quickly are the birds moving across the ground? Um, are they getting thrown around, etc., etc.? Just observe birds flying through the air. With practice over time, you'll get better at predicting what my wind conditions are up to at higher elevations. Now, so far, our wind indicators have been ground-based. The neat thing about birds is that now we are getting a pretty accurate understanding of what our wind conditions are doing above the ground, which is where we intend to fly. Now, our favorite species of bird as a paramotor pilot, for multiple reasons, is the turkey vulture. They like to fly for fun, and the most fun flying conditions for a turkey vulture is the type that doesn't require any effort whatsoever, and that means you've got rising columns of air, aka thermals, that give the bird lift, and that means that they don't have to flap, and that's when you're going to see turkey vultures out and about. So if you see turkey vultures, just understand that conditions are still a little on the spicy side. We might want to wait until we no longer see those vultures for the smoothest conditions. And that's going to go ahead and cover environmental factor number four. Moving on to our fifth and final environmental factor, clouds. We know them and we love them mostly as long as they're not everywhere and down low. Now, these are again that off of the ground wind indicator for you. And what you're looking for with clouds, well, a few things. So are the clouds moving quicker than what you feel on the ground, if that makes any sense? So not only are you referencing that gradients of wind speed on your weather apps and now you can actually visually see okay how fast do i estimate those clouds are moving if we see a big difference in what we feel on the ground conditions are likely really turbulent 20 or 30 feet off of the surface so how quickly are those clouds moving are they moving in different directions and what 
is the structure of those clouds. How dense are the clouds? If you notice clouds with dark bottoms, that is a mature cloud. And mature clouds have a mature amount of water moisture in them. A, a developed mature cloud can produce strong up or down drafts depending on the thermic cycle. Early on, you're gonna have strong updrafts. Later on, you're gonna have strong down drafts. So you wanna make sure that any clouds in your area don't have a lot of mass to them. They're not gonna be very threatening if they don't have dark bottoms. Spooky. Well, I am out of battery, my friends, so that's got to do it for this episode. I truly hope that this adds value to your weather assessing toolkit. And if it has, that you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, comment any questions you have, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.